we're going to be talking about National Moth Week. So welcome to Size Starter Live. Uh, we are already in National Moth Le uh, Week. And so if you are just turning tuning in now, you're going to be learning about how to moth and what National Moth Week is meant to do. And you'll hear from two experts who are actually co-founders of the process. So I'm actually going to stop my screen share so we can say hello to them um, before we get started. So uh, today we have with us um, Lidi, uh, oh my gosh, I'm going to do it again. Haramati? Haramati, yeah. Haramati, and we have Dr. Elena uh, Tartaglia. Oh God, I did it wrong, Tartaglia? No, okay, we're good. Sorry, I should have done that beforehand. Um, I'm so glad to have you both here. They are co-founders of uh, Moth Week and are both working on research in different ways, actually. So I'll let them introduce themselves a bit to explain why they're here and why they are invested in this. Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> go so ahead, Lady, Lady. Why, you, yeah, Lady, why don't you start? Okay, so I'm Liti. I'm like I said, I'm in, right now in Central New Jersey. In my day job, I'm a researcher at the Department of Marine and Coastal Sciences at Rutgers University. And at night, I hunt moths. Um, I have some background in entomology, but what really got me to National Moth Week um, was a volunteer work that we do through our local nonprofit that. Um, focus on conservation and education. And we just love to take people out and show them what lives around them. And one of the things we did was uh, moth nights and we invited families and residents to come see what's flying at night. And it just grew to be this amazing global project. Amazing. Yeah, so I uh, lived down in that area at the time, and I was working on my dissertation on moths and the family sphingidae. And um, I had heard about these moth nights in East Brunswick, and people were like, you should go, you should go. And you know what, after working on my dissertation and doing mothing, I was like, I don't know if I want to also spend my leisure time doing that as well. But it turns out I did, and I'm really happy that I did because I met Lady and Dave and Sandy and the other founders. Um, and we, you know, we started this National Moth Week project based on the amount of interest we had in East Brunswick local community at the time. Excellent. Awesome. Glad to have more background. If any of you have questions about any of that, you're welcome to drop them in the chat or Q&A and we'll continue to ask. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again so you can see the beautiful moth that we have. Um, either of you know the species of this moth, just out of curiosity? <laughs> Quiz question. Sorry for lack of warning. Is it, uh, I think it's the Cecropia. I actually, I have no idea. So I was, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I, I was a spingy. I think I was supposed to say a little more. So I was it working on the, the family spingy. Yeah. So it is a Cecropia. Okay. Um, I was working on the hawk moth family and now I'm a botanist and I study long-term, um, plant invasions in urban areas, but I still, of course, do a lot of outreach and talks about moths. Amazing. I also, yeah, we got the two responses from the chat saying Cecropia. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you both of you. Kendi I think this is one of our largest in the country. Wow. Yeah, it, I mean, that's beautiful. So beautiful. amazing. Worth its, <laughs> worth its size. All right, I'm going to hand it over to you two uh, to chat about what's next. So just let me know when you want um, the slides changed. Sure, thanks. So, Lady, was this me or you? That was you. Okay. So, yes, it was. Um, so, hi. Thanks again for joining. Um, so, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what um, what our goals are for this research project. So, we are collecting data as as we go along. So, this is a citizen science project, meaning we're inviting the public to participate in our data collection, because there are only a handful of moth researchers in the world. And there are many, many, many people who are not, you know, not actually scientists, but want to be involved in science collection. So we're collecting data on a couple of things. One of the things we're looking at is moth biodiversity and distribution. So where are moths in the world? And um, what, where are the most centers of biodiversity? And these are things that are definitely have been looked at for a long time, but we're adding more to that data set. And I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. And since it's a citizen science project, of course, everyone can participate and everyone is welcome to participate. So you can 
do a couple things for Moth Week. You can go to a public event, which you can find where those public events are on our website. We have a searchable map so you can find stuff near you. Or it can be as simple as I want to sit in my backyard with a glass of lemonade or other beverage of your choice and just look at moths on my flowers or at my porch light. So anywhere there's an outdoor light or anywhere that you could see moths counts as an event. And I also will say, and we discussed this a little bit, so this is no one's full-time job. This project is managed all volunteer um, teams and around the world, we have 40 country coordinators. So it's a really globally dispersed project. So we can go to the next one. So a little bit more about the goals of our project. So <clears throat> our first and foremost goal when we started back in East Brunswick in 2011 and 2012, our real goal was to really bring awareness to nocturnal biodiversity because nocturnal biodiversity goes unnoticed a lot of times because most of us are sleeping, right? And so we, there, you know, a lot of people don't think about all of the creatures that come out at night. And so we wanted to bring awareness to nocturnal biodiversity and furthermore to conservation of nocturnal organisms, especially moths and why it is that um, we're seeing declines. And we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And as I mentioned, we are gathering data on diversity and distribution. So we were, are wanting to look at changing trends in their distributions and their diversity. So Emma, we had talked for a few minutes about the concept of phenology. So I'll talk to you guys about what is phenology. Is phenology, the general definition, is the timing of biological events. So anything that happens seasonally counts as phenology. So when a flower blooms, that's phenology. When a bird migrates, that's phenology. When a moth goes from egg to caterpillar or caterpillar to pupa to adult, those are all phenologies. And when we talk about ecology, we talk about the linked nature of everything on earth, right? And all the species and depend on one another. So one of the things we're looking at is are the phenologies are the times that moths are active changing over time. And we've got many years of data now. So one of the things we're trying to look at is, are the caterpillars and their host plants, the host plant is what the caterpillar eats, are these still out at the same time as our world changes in response to changing global temperatures? So we might start seeing some mismatch between when the moth or the caterpillar is active and when the plant is available. And that can mean that um, for some of them, they can only eat one plant. That can mean that we're gonna see declines because of that. So we're really looking to see if we can see those changes in distribution. Are they moving north or south in responses to temperature gradients? And are there phenology changes over time? And these phenology changes have been detected in many species, you know, not just insects. And then, of course, so we're bringing in awareness, we're gathering data, and our other primary goal is education. So I'll talk a little bit about the importance of moths and ecosystems. Is that okay to do now? Yeah, oh, we can hear you. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, so the importance of moths and ecosystems, there is three sort of, there's many importance of moths and ecosystems, but I want to talk about three major things. And the first is, um, probably you could guess, right? Moths are food, right? So moths are food for a lot of different organisms. Moths are food for bats. Moths and bats are out at the same time. They're both nocturnal. Moths are food for any kind of omnivorous organisms like foxes, raccoons, even bears will eat moths. And importantly, moths are food for birds. And so there's lots of research on breeding bird success, right? So we're finding that caterpillars, whether they're moth or butterfly caterpillars, caterpillars are the number one food source for nestlings, for baby birds. So the success of birds growing up depends on caterpillars. If you think about a caterpillar, a caterpillar is perfect baby food, right? It's like a soft little sack of protein. It's perfect to feed a baby bird. So they're food, they're food for birds and, and many other organisms. Moths are involved in pollination, just like bees. Moths carry pollen from plant to plant, and that ensures genetic diversity and reproductive success for plants. And then so one of my favorites is ties into one of the reasons why people hate moths, because a lot of people don't like moths because they say, wait, 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 
before you go any further, I just have to tell you I hate moths because they eat sweaters. So that's really not fair, right? Because there's hundreds of thousands of moth species in the world and only a couple, like a really small handful, eat sweaters. And that actually ties into the ecosystem function of decomposition. So eating animal fibers is decomposition, right? And moths play a role. Now moths and many other organisms, other insects, bacteria, fungi, decompose dead organisms. Right, and decomposition is important because for two things, right? If we didn't have decomposition, everything that ever died would still be here, which would be unpleasant. And also that decomposition is a way that nutrients go back into soil. When plants take nutrients out of soil, the way for them to cycle back so we have fertile soil is via decomposition. So we have food webs, we have decomposition and we have pollination. So without moths, we would have fewer birds, maybe no birds at all, we'd have fewer plants and we would have less decomposition. So they're really important. So we're educating on those things. And we're also educating on ways to observe moths, both in nature and your own backyard. And we're gonna get more into that. We'll show you some videos in a few minutes. And then one of our main focus is um, conservation of moths. And that's okay. And ways to protect moths by planting native plants, just like a butterfly garden, you can have a moth garden and also by reducing nighttime lighting, which because dark habitat, darkness is a habitat for nocturnal organisms. So it's important to keep darkness. So those are our major goals. And so in the next slide, we just put in some of our beautiful moth species because also people tend to think of moths as ugly little brown things, right? And that's absolutely untrue. Because if I say, you know, people are like, well, hold on, I know a difference between a moth and a butterfly moths are ugly and butterflies are pretty, right? And so that's not true. And here are some, these are um, all East Coast species because that's where Lydia and I are, but here are some of our absolutely stunning moths that are just as pretty, if not prettier, although it's not a competition, <laughs> if not prettier than butterflies. And I agree with, with uh, Trevor in the chat, they look so amazing, right? And yes, if anyone has a favorite, feel free to, I would love to know everyone's favorites. <laughs> So, um, so we were asked, who is this project for? This project is for everyone, people who are interested in nature, people who are interested in moths especially, or people who wanna learn more about moths. So there's no, um, there's no sort of gatekeeping to this. If you are interested, we want you to participate. And just a few stats, since 2012, we've had 120 participating countries. And then in 2022, we had 92 participating countries. Not everyone participates every year, that's okay. Uh, and then our primary data partner is iNaturalist, which we're gonna talk more about. But in 2022, we had close to 190,000 observations just for one year alone and over 25,000 people participating in iNaturalist. So we are so thrilled with how big this project has gotten and how many people want to be involved. Okay, so I'll just add to the number of countries participating that more countries participated in National Moth Week than in the recent um, Winter Olympics. And we're very proud of that statistics. So the other nice thing about mothing is you really, all you need to do is turn on a light and they'll come to you. You can sit on a chair near the light and just wait for them. And you learn to look for them like when you're birding or looking for other animals. What we ask everybody who wants to participate, there's a few options for you. You can um, have your own private event in your backyard or wherever you are, if you're on vacation, you know, the the backyard of your Airbnb, or you can find on a map a public project that you can just join and, and go with other people. Um, we encourage everybody to take pictures, submit them to iNaturalist or Project NOAA or any of our other partners that are all listed on our website. And you don't need to know what, do, what the species of what you took a picture of is because people on those sites will help you identify. And it's really, really important to upload those photographs again because of what Elena said. This is data about distribution and phenology. And there already, already has been a few cases of um, organisms that were 
found from pictures that people took and uploaded to some of those sites. So that's very helpful. Um, I think Emma already mentioned the iNaturalist and the connection to SciStarter. And I'll just tell you a few words about Project NOAA. Project NOAA is another site where you can, where you can upload your uh, pictures of organisms and especially mods. And if you join Project NOAA and you upload a picture of a mod during the whole month of July to Mods of the World project on Project NOAA, you'll get this beautiful patch for Mothweek uh, on your account. And um, this is this is an amazing thing to have. So I encourage everybody to go on both those sites and, and submit your um, your observations. And uh, Emma, I think the next slide is yours. Yes, um, just so we can break down a couple of things. Someone asked earlier in the chat about um, what it means to sign up on iNaturalist versus the National Moth Week um, dot org site and everything. So I just wanted to give you a breakdown of um, things in case any of that was um, uh, missing um, in your thoughts. So iNaturalist and Project Noah are both on SciStarter. Um, the iNaturalist app is a, an affiliate, so you can get credit for every single observation. On Project Noah's end, um, they are not an affiliate, but if you are participating through them, they have the option to earn a patch if you observe uh, moths during Moth Week, I believe. So um, you can do that instead. Um, and we've just created a national um, event for uh, National Moth Week uh, within SciStarter. So that's more to show your support for uh, Moth Week, to show that you're a part of it. Um, and since that's on SciStarter, we can get a count on um, how many people are interested and um, uh, like interested in participating so we can keep doing more programs like this where we promote it for uh, Moth Week. Um, secondly, if you are doing a, moth, a mothing event, um, this is that link for you again, the nationalmothweek.org. All of these are what just uh, Roland just dropped into the chat. So there's quite a few, which is why I'm breaking it down. Um, if you want to join a public event, you don't have one planned already, you can go to that, um, that link that's also written there. It's listed as a join a public event in the chat. So if I can just say, so our website, National Moth Week, is not a data collection platform. So our data collection platform is the iNaturalist and the Project NOAA and, and SciStarter. So you would go to our website to see where you can join a public event or just to register your own, just to count towards our, um, our counts of how many we have. Yes, good clarification, especially, um, yeah, that actually, I was confused about that when we first started conversation, so I'm glad um, that you brought that up. There is a link, I believe this how to submit um, data goes to the multiple data versions mm -hmm. too, so it gives you instructions on how to do that. Yes. So if you have a preference on app or system, there is uh, one specifically. Oh, that's a great question, Amy. Do you have a specific project for iNaturalist? Have you created one of the team or like the groups in iNaturalist? So yes, but every moth observation that's loaded on your own account on iLateralist will automatically be added to National Moth Week. If, yeah, if you, you, don't, don't. you don't have to submit it during right. National Moth Week, but the observation has to be dated during National Moth Week. So you awesome. don't have to do anything except observe a moth in iNaturalist, that's it. Automatically added. Nice. Do you um, actually this relates to a question that was mentioned uh, in the Q and A? Actually, um, do you have a like a reporting um, outcomes after National Moth Week where you talk about what was um, similar to the statistics talked about the countries um, about results or any findings uh, from that National Moth Week or anything related? I think we do. I, so this is not the part I'm generally involved with. I think we do a news release after. Um, and I always, in my programs, I always report what we had the, um, the, the year before. That's where I got those numbers I cited earlier. Uh, and that just that we're working on, we're gonna be at giving a, giving a talk at Entomological Society of America this fall to sort of compile some of this, some of these stats. So we're working on it, but the deadline hasn't come yet. So I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I, I just want to add that that we also have a uh, a Flickr group for people you know this is more for people who are uh, more serious photographers and in our Flickr group there are well over 120,000 pictures of moths whoa so that's a good number to think about that is a good number <laughs> 
That's amazing. Um, also, if there's any questions that we don't get to answer during this time, by the by, um, and we just need to find the answer in a different way, um, we do a follow up email, and someone had asked about if we get if we send that along. Um, I'll follow I'll follow up with you all who um, signed up for the Zoom event, so you can get some more answers if we come up with them um, tomorrow, like by tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, uh, for sure. Not to worry. Um, Okay, let's move on for anyone who was like, yes, I use iNaturalist already. This is great news. Um, because it is an affiliate, you can also sign up to make sure that it tracks your contribution. So I just wrote the steps um, for that here. If you go to the affiliates page um, and you make the account using the same email as your SciStarter account, that means they can be linked. Um, and you can do that on your dashboard. So on your dashboard, there's a um, affiliation integration box where you just write down your username for iNaturalist and then boom, you will get credit immediately. Um, we also have um, support for that too. If you have any questions, you can let us know, but same email and remembering your username on iNaturalist is the, the two steps there. Um, and then you're all set. Cool. All right, I will pass it back to our guests. Thank you. So we love to have kids come to our moth nights and we, and kids love to come to our moth nights. Uh, we just had our local moth night a couple of days ago and there were a bunch of kids and they're so interested and they love just walking around in the park at night and, and looking at the, uh, the lights. Um, so on our website, there is a uh, page for kids with a lot of resources, books, and other resources. And one of them is this coloring book that Alison Ainsworth was very kind to share with us. And everybody can download the whole book and let their kids, you know, color the mods. And I can tell you that they're organized by families. And I sometimes look to remind myself what's what, because I tend to forget from one year to the next. So this is really a great resource, both for kids or I'll say kids of all ages. Uh, so check out that it, uh, it's on, uh, on our website. And I think Ronald is, uh, Ronald is going to put the, uh, the link in the chat. And I think some of the kids that came to our original moth nights back in like 2011 and 2012 have like gone to college to study insects by this point. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. We can move on to the next slide. So I, I, this slide is just a bunch of pictures uh, to illustrate everything we talked about. And uh, the, the picture on the, on the top left is one of our local moth nights. And you can see a bunch of people just looking at the lights and everybody had a great time. And underneath this picture is a, actually a picture of my father taking a picture of a moth. Now, my father was not very interested in nature or insects, but he was a photographer and he was very excited when I took him to moth night and he didn't want to leave and he took so many pictures. And then he set up a light on his, uh, on his porch at home and was sending him pictures. So once you see one beautiful moth, you love them forever. Uh, the picture on the top right is Jacob, who's uh, also on our team, was one of the first people on our team. Uh, this is a picture of him when he was a young teenager. He's now a graduate student. And this is the setup that Jacob had in his own backyard. Um, yeah, Jacob just so got his master's degree in, uh, oh. in arthropod biology. That's great. I didn't know he graduated. And the, uh, the picture at the bottom, the long pictures is again from one of our moth nights. I really like this picture because this is really what you see if you take a few steps back and you're standing in the dark and looking into the light. Uh, the other three pictures are pictures from outside of people's homes. And one of them is a, is a setup for mothing, as you can see, but the other two are just porch lights. And you can see how many moths came to just a regular porch light. So really, it doesn't take much to participate in this project. You just have to keep your porch light on and take pictures. And um, I think our next slide. I had a quick question about that, actually. Does it matter what kind of light? So that's um, a big, you know, big up for debate question. And really, no, you. I mean, you can put on your porch light, your regular bulb, and have moths come to it. Um, if you get really into it, for 
I have a 175 watt full spectrum bulb. There's, you know, questions of which wavelengths um, different moths or different insects are attracted to, but really anything works. So if you if you are just starting out, just use um, just use your regular light bulb. If you really get into it, you could start buying more and more equipment. Like any hobby, you could fill your whole house with accessories. Amazing. <laughs> All right, a second now. Uh, oops, I'll switch to the next one. So oh, no. this is a little this is a short video that was made by our team member uh, Carl Berentin from uh, Washington. Carl is incredible, as you will see. Were you able to hear that noise just now? Okay, I'm gonna reshare, I apologize. I think my audio is not shared. Mm -hmm. Try that again, desktop. Okay, now it should work. Hi, I'm Carl Barentine. I live in Spokane, Washington. I've been mothing for about a dozen years now, six of those years here in Spokane, Washington, where I've been looking at the diversity of moths in my backyard. I have found uh, over 800 species of moths in the last six years in my backyard. Isn't that amazing? Um, it's simple uh, apparatus to get started in mothing. All you need is a bed sheet, old bed sheet, uh, a light source of some sort. Here I have an LED light, uh, some clotheslines, some clothespins, and that's about it. And uh, you'll be surprised at how these light lures will bring in moths as well as other insects in arthropods to your sheet at night where you can examine them more closely. And uh, we're going to do that. I'm going to turn the camera on the sheet here in a few minutes and uh, take a look at some of the moths that are here at 11.30 at night on the 2nd of July in Spokane, Washington. Let's take a look at some of the moths that we have on our sheet. Here's one. Here's another. Here's another. Here's one here too. Right on the light. Look at that. And then over here, there's another. Look at that beetle. Up here, over here, up here, up here, we've got a few moths, and other arthropods too, like this ichneumon wasp, which I can't get into focus right now, well there it is, okay. Well, that wraps up this short video. Um, I want to encourage you to uh, check out what's in your backyard during National Moth Week this July. And uh, I think you'll be quite surprised by the diversity of moth fauna that you find in your backyard. Um, so I wish you luck. Bye bye. Excellent. That's such a beautiful video. Carl is an absolute treasure. We are so lucky to have met him. And we met him because in the first year that we ran National Moth Week, we had every state except North Dakota. And I said in an offhand comment that got picked up by a newspaper, I don't think anybody lives in North Dakota. Typical Jersey attitude, right? Um, and then we, and Carl was living, he's living in Washington now, but he was living in North Dakota at the time and he got in touch and we, you know, we have adored him ever since. He's been such an asset to us. Amazing. Uh, we're switching gears over to Q&A. Um, and I know there were a bunch and I apologize because a bunch of them were in the chat. And so I'm going to be sliding through them as much as I can. If I miss yours, feel free to like copy and paste um, it again, just in case. But um, there were a couple in the Q&A that I wanted to bring up first. Um, someone wants to know what type of moths they saw. Do you have, uh, well, I could tell you the description and I will, but also if you have any reference point for the best, best versions of how to help someone 
um, how to help someone identify a moth. So this one was, um, I lived on, oh, thank you, Rachel, by the way, for the comment. Uh, I lived on Sabago Lake, Maine in the early 1980s as a kid. And I remember pastel, pink, blue, green, and cream colored moths. They were not, they were not huge, but I thought they were beautiful. Um, and she doesn't know what kind of uh, moths they were. Um, and now lives in San Antonio, Texas, and I hardly see moths here. Uh, but the other day I had a huge moth that landed and died on my front porch table. <laughs> Gosh, that's terrible. I'm sorry. Um, I took a picture and found out that it was a black witch moth. Are they a regular species for Texas? Are they um, a, like, are they common in Texas, I guess? Thoughts? So as far as the first ones, so I can recommend, so in Maine, you can, there, I don't have it with me right now. The Peterson Guide to Moths of Eastern North America is a great resource. Um, I don't suppose you have a cell phone photo from the 1980s. That's fine. So I guess you can upload it to iNaturalist. So the pastel pink ones are probably rosy maple or maybe primrose moths. Blue, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I know any blue moth species. And then the, the pastel green ones, there's a lot of pastel green ones, including um, the, em the whole group that are called the emeralds. Uh, so... I would recommend checking out that field guide or poking around on bug guide. And then as far as the black witch, the black witch I know is a tropical species that is um, an occasional migrant or an occasional sort of what we call a vagrant. You get an occasional one up north, although I do believe that, and that's a species that we are going to look at as a data point, specifically the black witch, because they're a, a cool name and be a really cool huge moth and a lot of people notice them. But I do believe they are shifting northward, uh, even as far as occasionally we get them here on the East Coast too, but they're a fantastic moth to see. Excellent. Um, there are a couple other questions. Are we still, oh, uh, this is about the different forms of data submission. So submitting via uh, Bamona, B-A-M-O-N-A -A, and Bug Guide, are those still within the list? Looks like. Yes, absolutely. They are on the list and they're great places to submit. But yeah, I love Bug Guide. It's one of those like OG sites from the dawn of the internet. And uh, Bemona is Butterflies and Moths of North America is, is what that website is. Gotcha. Um, and then there was a question about what are your favorite books or field guides for helping identify moths? We kind of talked about that, but do you have a go-to that's just a general one for you or for anyone in the world? Is that a tough thing to do since it's all species regional <laughs> yeah so like I just I'm I'm an east coaster and so I like the Peterson guide to moths of eastern North America um and then for caterpillars Wagner's uh guide to caterpillars is a great one and then you know what though most of the time it's 2023 I don't want to take out a book I use iNaturalist <laughs> good point <laughs> I use iNaturalist way too often take out a book <laughs> There is a there is a page with uh, books on our website, so the field guides are there, and some other books with good information. And I will say that there's a book called Discovery Moths that wrote John Himmelman, and the book first came out 20 years ago, and the second edition came out a couple of weeks ago, and highly recommended. Great book, especially for beginners. Um, I can put a link on, in the chat. I'll do that in a minute. Yeah, absolutely. It might actually be useful. Um, we can go to your um, to the website really fast. I can yeah, share my screen. Yeah, yeah. Mini review because you're I mean, the website is thorough about every question you might have. I went on earlier today at looking for a very specific answer and found it with the most like logical reasoning uh, going to whatever That's area great. I have to go to. So wow. very helpful. That's great. Um, to hear. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I say having nothing, haven't had nothing to do with website design. <laughs> <laughs> it was a well-made one. Good job. <laughs> uh, okay, so no, I have to say that I've just I'll just mention that this is a the, the website was newly designed a couple of years ago by uh, who, the guy who was our Chris coordinator, Chris Tacklis, um, and he he did the whole thing. He just redid the whole uh, design of the website. And uh, he recently resigned, and we have a new Chris coordinator. So Emma, if you click on uh, on the blog, up on the, yeah. 
So there's a lot of information in the blog. We always introduce new people on the board. Uh, this is a guest blog from uh, Carly in Texas who became enthusiastic about moths. And if you click on this, yeah, click on the National Moth Week in the books. And this is the information on the book, Discovering Moths. And also a, uh, a coupon code for uh, the publisher is offering 30% discount. For nice. uh, National Moth Week people. Where is that? Um, I don't know if you want to show the kids page. Oh, sure. Kids page. Yep. Except, of course, when I'm trying to navigate while streaming, that's when I can't find yeah, it. That's okay. <laughs> there you go. So lots of, you know, kids books and, and easy um, guides. Excellent. And the Flickr, share photos from your mouthing adventures on the Flickr group. Oh yeah. And then if you scroll, oh, that's great. I was gonna say, if you scroll to the top of the page, you can see where to find and where to register. But, but yeah, that's our Flickr group. Oh yeah, that's Flickr. Right. Yeah, click on the, oh, okay, never mind. I, I'll just say, if you click on registration, mm -hmm. um, there's the registration form, but there, there are links to two other forms because we are a global project. There are forms in, um, there's a form in Spanish and there's a form in French. And if you go back and click on news media right there and scroll down a little bit, all these yellow boxes are flyers about National Moth Week in different languages. So choose a language, language, and uh, maybe maybe find the Arabic one for Roland. Yeah, Arabic one. Ah. Since I'm in Lebanon. Mm. Where is there? Oh, it should be in there. Yeah, there yeah. we are. Yep. <laughs> so again, we had you know it's volunteers from all over the world who translated the flyer for us. Amazing. Sometimes it's just me like changing just the date, but just yeah, the no, numbers it's... because I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> we can't yeah. find anyone to do it. I'm just like putting in the number. We 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 trust the people who translated that the information is all correct. And then mm -hmm. Elena just every year changes the date. Now you have a friend just in case if you need another Arabic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and and does anyone person. anyone listening to us who wants to translate to other languages? Yeah, if you have another language, know. we'd love to have you. Yep. I like the focus on that. That's really amazing that y'all take um, so much time to or make sure that that's available to everyone. So thank you for doing that. Awesome. All right. Oh, that was the Bomona one. Mm -hmm. um, there it is. And then a couple more. Yeah, you've got lots of options here. Yep. So clearly. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Um, I'm going to stop my share because we had a couple other questions. I think I saw one about light. Uh oh. Oh, no. You guys write too much in the chat. There we go. Um, is there a peak time of the night to view moths in the lights? Yeah. So, having, you know, having spent countless hours in front of moth lights, um, so it tends to be a little later than a lot of people want to stay out, unfortunately. So when I give a moth night, I'm like, yeah, I know we're starting at 8 p.m. But um, when I when I used to moth a lot, I'd find the uh, the ones people really want to see, the hawk moths and the silk moths tend to come out pretty late, like after midnight. Uh, so you have to be pretty committed. And, you know, from a conservation perspective, I always recommend that people don't just put the light on and then go to sleep and see what's there in the morning uh, because it does open them up to bird predation and other forms of predation and just sort of wastes their wastes their night where they could be foraging or mating. Um, so you, uh, you, like I said, you gotta you have, have an espresso before you start and stay up. So they do tend to come out pretty late. I was at a, I was giving an event last night um, and we ended around 9.30 p.m. and we started seeing a few of the loopers and a few other things, um, but really you wanna stay out as late as you can. Uh, that is not to say that other stuff that you might see earlier isn't interesting. So like the caddis flies tend to come out a little earlier and caddis flies are the closest evolutionary relative to Lepidoptera. So you're almost there. So you can see those a little earlier. 
That's super interesting. I'm going to look up caddis fly later. <laughs> um, does the moon or sorry, the lunar cycle affect the success of mothing at all? Or is there like, is there any weird connection to moon cycles or unknown? <laughs> So this is a this is a debate we've had a, for a long time about choosing the last full week of July to be National Moth, right? Because we, you know we've gotten a little pushback. I mean, nothing major, whatever. People are welcome to criticize, and that's fine. Um, but getting a little pushback of putting it at the last full week of July because it's a memorable date as opposed to following these moon cycles, right? So there's anecdotal evidence. Um, that there's more out during the new moon, which is when there's actually no new moon being no moon out. But I've mothed every every night of the summer, some summers, and it really is much more dependent on weather conditions where you want a hot and humid night, like just before a thunderstorm is like the best time for mothing. It's unfortunately the worst time to have mothing equipment out in a field. But um, those really hot, humid nights uh, are are the best and and so the, you know don't be discouraged any night you want to go out that it's hot just go out there and see what's out there and it's just it's more you know it's a an effort thing where the more you do it the more you see true um there that gave me a thought because in arizona we have monsoons but our monsoon season has started and we have not had any to my knowledge i was out of town for a while but i'm curious because it's a bad monsoon season, but I'm getting excited for the next one that will happen because I think that would qualify as a humid and thunderstormy yeah, almost. For sure. I'm curious. <laughs> it's actually about to thunderstorm where I am, so I hope my power doesn't go out. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. Then you can't. Your... Is it by you too, Lady? Yeah, I just started. I'm wondering. <laughs> um, is there a National Moth Week certificate that can be printed and given to people who participate in events or someone? who is hosting an event can give it out to their people? Is that available? So absolutely. Everybody who registers gets a certificate. If you organize a public event, then your organization name will be on it. If you're, if it's a private event, then your name will be on it. Um, our, our logo and the certificate were designed by the amazing Belin Mena from Ecuador. Uh, she's both an artist and a a mother moth enthusiast like we should put her name in the chat so people can look at her artwork oh yeah that's a, we'll that's a that. really good idea because she does she a lot of her designs are based on moth wings uh yeah. so yes you'll get a certificate if you are organizing a public event and you want to give your own certificate just contact me and uh i'll send you a logo that you can use on your certificate Excellent. On that topic, actually, do you have a good contact like email that you would prefer people use for that or social media, whichever is best? Um, I'm sorry, I missed the question. Oh, Lady, what email, what email do you want to use? Uh, you can send it to info at nationalmothweek.org or the easiest thing we release to go to our website and just use the contact form so you don't have to remember anything. Uh, we do have a Facebook page. It's called National Moth Week. And we're affiliated with the hugely successful Facebook group, uh, Moths and mo Mothing and Moth Watching. Yes. Um, so everybody's welcome to join. Excellent. So such a good community event. I'm glad that we could have you both on to um, discuss the success and how it's been going. Um, we're about nine minutes out and I'm happy to have us answer more questions, but just so we can get through um, a couple more slides of updates and then we can come back to questions if there are any more, um, or if anyone wants to share um, more information that they like in the follow-up email, I collect everything from the chat and keep everything in that's relevant and helpful to anyone who might be wanting to participate. And I will send that all out to you. Um, but just so you're prepared for the next things, not related to mothing, I apologize. Um, so hopefully some of you will relate to these other topics too. Um, but in August, we have a set of topics for our Sci Start Alive series um, that you can sign up for on our, um, you can go to our blog or you can go directly to the sign up link for Zoom. Uh, we'll be talking about litter and pollution for the two, two first weeks. And then uh, National Dog Day is August 26th. So we celebrate that the week earlier on the 22nd. So if any of you have dogs or just love dogs, I don't have my own dog. 
but I love dogs. And so I'll be talking about dogs with someone um, and it will be great. Uh, and then if any of you are bothered by mosquitoes in your area, we'll be talking about um, the Globe Mosquito Mapper project. That is a NASA project from the Globe Observer app. Um, and if you've ever used that or are curious about that, um, we'll be talking to an expert uh, or lead researcher or, in science, or um, project manager of that um, specific project. So um, those are the things coming up. Uh, that said, another additional thing, we have a wonderful pr program with NASA um, where we're teaming up to talk about um, things over the next couple of years. Um, and we have two solar eclipses coming up. So the next event with NASA is actually going to be on um, September 19th to prepare everyone for the first eclipse and then also for the, the next eclipse. That's, uh, so we have an October, uh, October 14th, and then in April, there's one on April 8th. That's a total eclipse on the April 8th. And then the annular is in October. So uh, looking forward to having as many people there as we can, and you can register from that link, um, which will be dropped into the chat. Um, be aware it's not the um, NSTA one, um, Roland, by the way. Excellent. Okay, those are the upcoming things, not related to moths, I'm sorry, but you know, you can bring moths to the party, just do these things at night with the light. There you go. Um, anyway, so <laughs> there's a lot of resources SciStarter has, we're happy to help you however we can. Um, and we love that you're all here. We have a survey that you can fill out, it takes like less than two minutes um, to let us know how we're doing and how much you love moths. Um, so we can make sure to keep doing uh, events like these in the future. Um, and as we get ready for Citizen Science Month this year, which is in April. So um, all those things involved, um, you can get more projects off of the SciStarter site and get more info um, from any of our resources there. So I'll leave it at that and also end the um, share screen just to return to our group if there were any more questions. There was a ton of advice and ideas um, in the chat. So thank you everyone who wrote those things. Um, and it looks like, okay, last call for questions and it looks like we might be okay. Like Roland's going to help us with our Arabic. Thank you. <laughs> Much appreciated. And uh, also, if anyone, can I give a plug for myself? If you would like, I give both in person and virtual talks about moths and their importance and how to conserve them. If you wanted, if you want to um, get in touch. And oh, yeah, Eric is talking about sugaring for moths, which is uh, you can make moths it turns out like to drink beer so you can make a bait out of beer and old fruit and uh, paint it on trees and they will come and have a little drink with you I, I like to get something that I like to share with them but you can use any kind of beer <laughs> that that you like wow I did not know that was the thing that's amazing I have heard about like moth traps like a it was a a podcast I talked about a lepidopterologist like favorite like versions of how to trap or like to find moths in the wild and there were some really gross recipes out there so that sounds better than the ones that I've heard about <laughs> yikes um my final question then just to end us on a fun note I'm just curious if you guys have any go-to if you were to explain to someone what the best thing about moths are or why we should care what is your what would be your go-to uh thing to tell someone pretend you're at some event not related to moths. So what I usually say is moths are integral to a functional ecosystem and a functional ecosystem is essential for human life. So we have to care about these things. Totally. I have um, I have a bunch of moth photos on my phone. And if someone says something like that or ask the question, I start with showing some pictures of the IO moth, which is on our logo and the Cercopia moth that we showed at the beginning and a few other ones. And that's just, just by doing that, I, I, start, I, I think I changed people's perception about what moths are. And then it's, you know, pollinators and all the other things that Elena mentioned. Yeah, they're beautiful, they're adorable, like what's not to love. And their insects and, and moths and other insects and other organisms are le leading whole lives that don't even depend on us. And here's, here's these tiny little organisms that live out their whole lives doing what they need to do. And, and they just know what to do with, with themselves. And like, to me, I'm like, as a person who, you know, who thinks about what is the meaning of life, right? Like insects don't think about that. Animals don't think about that. They just do their lives and they, and they, they, just exist and it's really sort of humbling to think about to get more philosophical totally those are all beautiful they're really <laughs> i'm sorry mm -hmm. they're really everywhere i mean mm -hmm. uh, except for maybe i think there are no moths in antarctica 
Liddy was once on a research ship in the middle of the ocean and found a moth. Yeah, <laughs> in the middle of the North Atlantic. Some, like, did it stay on the boat or something or did it arrive? I, I, I think it was on the boat when we left. We left okay. from the Azores, um, but I don't even know where, how long it's been there, but it was happy and alive and yeah, it was very exciting. And, you know, uh, this was a, a five week long cruise. So everybody, you know, the, everybody already knew that I like them. Uh, <laughs> so it was very exciting. Amazing. Uh, there was one other comment about the same top or the same question of like, what would you tell someone? Um, Eric said, mothing guaranteed to end boredom for the rest of your life. Lol. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Eric. Eric, uh, Eric, we've known Eric for a really long time as, as well in our project. So Eric, especially thank you for being here. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, we're two minutes from the hour. So if there aren't any other questions, I will have us sign off and get our two minutes back to the rest of your day. Um, thank you all for being here. This was super, super lively. I love that there are so many people out there who are um, interested in mothing and already are mothing and want to give this advice. So we will make sure to post um, all those lovely advice pieces in the follow-up email um, and keep sending good information and helpful stuff to, um, uh, to anyone else who's interested. Um, there's also someone who wrote, I focus on the fact that they are not only beautiful, but are unseen pollinators as important as bees. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, night. <laughs> the night shift, we call it. The night shift. The night shift pollinators. Totally. Excellent. Um, the small things that run the world is uh, one, one thing that uh, a lepidopter yeah. just told me once. I was yeah. like, this is, that is beautiful. Thank you for mm -hmm. saying that uh, phrase. Um, awesome. All right. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and we will see you next time for all the other topics. Bye, everyone. Bye.